Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. I appreciate you joining me. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a new uh, game that I just was able to get on the table. This is actually a print and play and uh, should be coming to Kickstarter really, really soon if it is not already there by the time you're actually watching this. The name of the game is called A4 Quest. Um, this is what we have here. Uh, this is the very first um, scenario, or I guess adventure uh, is a better word to use, uh, that basically you can print it out and go right into the adventures. There's no cutting you have to do. Uh, we just have the printed sheets out here, uh, some spare tokens and dice that I've had from other games. Um, had Pandemic Legacy uh, 1, I was able to use the components from that. Or Actually, no, I'm sorry, this is Pandemic Legacy 2, but neither here nor there. Anyway, so uh, the components that we need to get together are five dice, uh, just D6. Four of those dice are going to be uh, what you roll from the, the hero dice pool, and one is going to be the adventure die. This is used to determine like enemy strengths and some other uh, various things around the dungeon. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started with the setup here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to basically prepare our... our uh, I'll move this here a little closer, our hero sheet. All right, so in order to do that, we're going to put our available dice here for our hero. Now, at the start of the game, first thing we do is we roll our dice to get our, our dice pool going. All right, so we rolled a two, a three, and two ones. Now, this is not a very good dice pool. So at the very start of the game, we have an option to re-roll up to two dice if we don't like the result. So I'm going to re-roll these two ones and hopefully get a, some better numbers. Okay, I got some okay numbers, uh, so, but that's now what we're stuck with. And so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and build our, our stats here. So for the knight, what we're going to do is we put our counters here. Uh, we start with two on the attack, uh, two on the defense, five life, zero experience, no crystal shards or crystals, and one meat. The next thing we're going to do is we put our pawn on the start of the adventure, which is going to be right before the campfire here uh, tile. And then the final thing we do is we choose one additional piece of equipment visible on the character sheet. Now these are going to be the choices that we have here, which is one shield, one attack, or two food. Uh, my choice for this adventure is going to be the two food, so we're going to move that marker up to three. All right, so now that we've got all the setup out of the way, uh, we move into the actual start of the adventure. Now, in order to best describe this and you know how the how the plays occur, is the first thing you do on the turns is your movement, and movement is mandatory. You have to move into the tile, and you move from a left to right direction, and then when you get done there, you move down to the next row, and then you proceed from left to right until you reach uh, the final boss. Uh, movement, if you're moving onto a tile here, if the first start of the tile, that there's no cost for movement there. Uh, for moving from one tile to the next tile, you pay the movement cost. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it is two, two die, or not, a value of two, uh, on a die roll, at least two to get you uh, that you would have to pay there. So, I would have to pay, uh, you know, a two to get there, or I could pay a higher dice if I didn't have anything lower than that. Like I could pay a three or four, uh, five or six, etc., uh, to pay that cost there. When you're moving from one tile to the next, is when you pay the cost for that. Some tiles are broken up into different segments. Uh, that movement. From, to moving from uh, left to right is free until you get to the end and then you're moving to the next tile is when you pay the movement cost uh, which is seen up here in this little uh, purple icon. Uh, the next thing you, you do after your movements is you have some choices. You can either take an action in a tile or you can rest. Uh, taking an action in a tile you are limited to what is actually shown here uh, the green little horn symbol is for a hunt. When you do a hunt, you choose uh, from this table down here based on the die that you, one of your hero dies that you supplied. So, for instance, if I used a four when I was 
making uh, or doing a hunt, I would take the result here of getting one food uh, for my hero. If we were to do the questing, which is this blue icon here, you would supply one of your hero dice, but it doesn't matter what the value of the die that you supply is. You're just going to supply a die, one from your uh, available active hero dice, and then you're going to roll the adventure die once and see what you actually landed on on the table there. This is the only time that you're actually going to use that mechanic of rolling the adventure die when choosing which, uh, what thing you do uh, from, the, from the list here. The next one is the treasure. Depending on, again, which hero die you supply for that uh, specific tile, or that specific action, I should say, you will choose from the list here. Now, the way the treasures are broken up is you have uh, different brackets that the dice may fall into. For example, I have a dice of four. If I use that one for the treasure on this one, um, I would say, okay, my, if my value is four, then I have the choice between the three and four. 3 to 4, which is a heart, 3 to 5, which is a shield, or 4 to 6, uh, which is a combat stat increase. Uh, so there's a little bit of variation on which you can choose there. Uh, some of the symbols here will have a modifier next to them. Uh, for instance, on this first tile, if I wanted to do a treasure, then whatever die that I supply with it will have a negative 2 modifier. So if I supply it a 4, my value of the die will then become a 2, so I won't have a 2 to choose from uh, available options on the list. Uh, some other things that have modifiers are the enemies. If we're going to fight an enemy in a space with this red skull here, or this white skull with a red background, uh, some will have a modifier on them, like these here. That uh, What happens is, is when you encounter an enemy in a space, you actually roll on the enemy chart. Depending on what value you get uh, with the adventure die is determines how strong the enemy will be. Uh, like the first one here, if we rolled a 1 through 3 on the adventure die, we wouldn't have to fight any monster at all. But as we get further down in the dungeon, the enemies get harder. Uh, for example, on the third level here, uh, this particular enemy has a modifier of plus 3. So even if I rolled a 1, wouldn't matter because he has a modifier of 3. That would automatically bring it up to a 4, which, you know, fighting the enemy here. So we'll kind of go through that as uh, I'm showing the example. I'm just kind of going through a quick run through of the, the rules uh, so you can kind of see that. Now, uh, when you take your actions on a tile, you can only take one action. After that action is done, you have to move on to the next tile. Uh, when you use your hero dice up, uh, let's say by the time you get to the end of here, we've used one hero dice, um, another one to move, and then by this time you should almost be out of the available hero dice you have you would have to take a rest action. Or you can take a rest action whenever you want to, uh, but you can only do it if you have available food to do the action. When you rest, you're going to consume one food. When you rest, you can take any dice that hit, you have used up that are in your inactive area. You can bring them back into your active area and re-roll them um, using the new result. You can also re-roll any of the dice that are in your active area that you haven't used yet. Maybe say you had some low numbers on there and did a rest. You could re-roll any of the dice that are available to you, inactive and active, uh, for a new result. And um, so that's pretty much all of the, the major things I want to outline here before we get started. Uh, but like I said, most of the stuff I'll cover actually during gameplay. So if you're still interested, stick around. I'm going to kind of run through this. It might be a quick match. It, it might not. I might die real fast, but uh, we'll see. I just kind of wanted to get this out to show you guys how to play it. All right, so we've already rolled our dice pool here, so we know what's available to us. Uh, we have our adventure die here, which we'll use that uh, when instructed to during the gameplay. Uh, so we're pretty much set up and ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my adventure onto the first space and that's a free movement we don't have to pay for that because it's the start of the adventure and then I need to choose what I want to do uh, resting really is not an option for me because there's no reason to right now um, so I have to choose one of these um, things here that I want to do do I want to hunt do I want to quest or do I want to do a treasure doing a treasure is not great right now because it's a negative two modifier questing I don't like the I don't like to go questing unless I have to because of the random nature of the chart that we roll on for that um, being as one 
uh, you get a negative health, and two, you might have to fight an enemy here. So kind of like to stay on the safe side. Uh, I'll choose to go on a, uh, um, a hunt. I will use my dice of four here, which is the highest one I have. So this is now an inactive dice. Since I use my dice of four, I can choose the, uh, the food that that gives me. So my food is going to go to a four. My action is done for this tile, so I have to move on. Now to move on, I have to go from this tile to this one. I have to pay the cost of two. So I'll be using another dice, uh, which is now inactive, so that I paid my movement to get here. So we're now on the first space of this tile, and it is broken up, so I have to move to each one of these rooms before I can get to the end. Uh, now that we've moved, I have only two options for um, actions besides the rest, which is the hunt or the treasure. If I go ahead and do a hunt, I only have two dice left to me, which are at a three, and that will allow me to get one more food. So I will go ahead and go on another hunt, getting myself one more food because of this the chart result here. And then we move on to the next room. Now we immediately see that we have an enemy that we're going to fight, so we go ahead and take care of that first before we move into our actions of the room. Hopefully we can survive this. The first thing we do is we roll a dice to see if we're going to uh, encounter an enemy or not. There is no modifier on this uh, enemy, so we're just going to take the results of the die and consult the chart. All right, our result here was a four. So we look at our chart here. Since there was no modifier, we take the result here and say, we will be combating an enemy that has two shields and two hits as a base attack. All right, next thing we do is we decide what, which one of our hero dice we'll be applying to the fight. It's an easy choice for me. I only have a three. So this is the dice that I will be applying to this fight. Now we immediately go back and we're going to add some stats um, onto the enemy that we're fighting. So we go ahead and roll the adventure die again. We get a two. Now we remember that the enemy that we're going to be fighting when we rolled, we got a four here. So the enemy that we're fighting had a base of two hits and two defense. Now the second time we roll the power die is what is we're going to be adding on as an addition uh, to that enemy both in the defense and the attack. So this enemy actually now attacks for four uh, and defends for four. All right, so knowing that, we've had a, had our dice here. This is what we're going to be attacking and defending with, and we're going to be adding this to our base stats. The enemies always attack first, so the enemy attacks me for four because it has a base of two plus the added two from this dice. My defense is a base of two, but I add the power dice or the hero dice that I chose. So my defense now becomes a five. So I was able to block all of the incoming damage. Uh, as far as what, now that he's done attacking and I was able to defend it, it's my turn to attack. I attack for a base of two, added the three, and my full attack is now a five. His defense is, remember, a base of two plus added two. He only can defend four. so. Any amount of damage that is able to go through his defense is an automatic kill. All right, so now that we've killed him, we can take the reward that is beside the monster of that level, which is one experience. So one experience on my chart for successfully killing the enemy. Now, all of my dice have been used up. I have no available dice to me because now since we've killed that enemy, I can perform actions in the room. The only action I can do at this point is to rest because I have no dice to do anything with. So we'll move my food down one point and then we'll go ahead and roll these dice to see what my new dice pool is. Not super great, but it is what it is. All right, so we move to the next room here. Uh, there's no enemies, but we have we can either go questing or a treasure. Uh, I know I need this one when we move out of the room, so this one's going to be the dice I move with, so I'm going to kind of set that aside so I can remember that. Um, so we do have a couple of dice here that are available to us. Uh, I know I have an enemy coming up in this room, so I definitely want to save my higher dice, like a four and five, so I don't necessarily want to use those right yet. 
So I may do something a little risky. I'm going to go ahead and use this one here, and I'm going to apply it to the quest. Now remember I said that it doesn't matter the value of the dice that you use for the quest because you're rolling on the chart anyway, so that's why I like to use my dice that are basically of no value. All right, so now that we've used that hero die for the quest, we're going to roll on the, ch the quest chart down here. We get a six, which was awesome, because a six gives us one XP, so we'll add another XP to our character. That could not have gone any better. All right, so now that we're done with this room, we have to pay the movement cost to get from this tile to this one, which is a two. Remember the two that I set aside, I said I wanted to use, has now been used for that movement. All right, now I know I want to use the five, which is a, a great attacking dice for this monster here, so I'm not gonna mess with the five. So I will go ahead and use my four uh, in this room to do the hunt. Four, remember, gives you one food, so I can recoup that food that I just used not that long ago. All right, so now we move to this one. We're gonna be fighting another enemy, and as you can see here, this enemy has a plus two modifier. So we're gonna roll the adventure die first. We get a six. Six plus two is eight. So we are now fighting this one here, uh, which is a base of five defense and five damage. That's a tough one. All right, so we know we're gonna be using our five. That's the next thing we do is decide which hero dice that we wanna use. So now that we've chosen that, we roll for the modifier on the enemy. All right, so we're gonna roll the our adventure die again. We get a two. That's actually really good because of the low dice. Remember we went, uh, which was an eight here. Now we need to see, does the, the uh, creature we're fighting have any special abilities? It does have a special ability, which is negative one or negative uh, crystal. So that would have gone into effect automatically. We don't have any crystals, so this has no effect to us whatsoever. So now we go into the fight. Remember, the enemy attacks first. So the enemy attacks with a base five plus two of the dice roll. So he hits for seven. Uh, I block um, a base of two plus five, so I block seven. I was able to block all that damage. Uh, he also has a f base of five defense plus two, so his seven defense. So it's the same thing. I can't even get, it's a wash because I, I hit for two plus five, which is seven. So nobody's hurt, but I do not claim the experience for that fight since I was not able to kill him. I was just able to not take any damage, which is good. All right, so I've used up all of my uh, dice for that, getting up to this point. So I can't do the action of questing in here. So the only thing I really can do is take a rest. All right, so we're going to go ahead and roll the dice again. I get an okay amount. So we'll set those over here. And then we'll move ourselves to the next room. All right. Uh, let's see, this three here I'll probably be using for movement, so I'll set that aside. Uh, the only action I could take besides resting is the treasure, which we'll go ahead and probably do that. So we have a couple of options here. This treasure chest is plus one. Uh, so if I took the four and used it, and that would give me a result of five, I could go anywhere um, to get a shield, a... Uh, what is that, an attack increase, or I can re-roll two dice um, and put those back in the pool. Let me double check that real quick. Yes, those are recover a used hero die and move it to your hero pool. So this one would only help me if I had used uh, power dice that I needed to recover. I believe that that is what that is gonna do. So this one really won't help me because um, I don't have any used dice, so I could either go for a, um, let's see, a, a shield or an attack, which might be pretty good. Now, if I use the one, that will increase to a two because of this modifier here. And twos, basically the only thing I can do is re-roll uh, one active hero dice. So I may actually be able to roll... I don't know, like one of the fours and hopefully a better result, but I'm going to kind of play it safe because I could get something low. So I'm going to go ahead and opt to use a four uh, for this room here and going through the treasure. 
I'm gonna up my attack by one. That's the re that's the uh, the upgrade I'm gonna go with. So we increase that one here on a hero sheet. Next thing we do is we need to move from this tile to this one. So we pay our dice at least of two. So I'm gonna use that three one. I only have a four and a one left. Uh, I do have an option since there's no enemies in here. I can kind of play a little safe. Uh, using my four to get another food is probably what I'm going to do. I'll use my four on the, the hunt to get one more food. And then move ourselves here since we're done in there. Now I only have one dice left and I'll probably risk it since so far I'm doing okay. And use that one to go on the quest. So we're going to roll the adventure die to see what result I get. We get a three, which is absolutely nothing. Yay. All right, so we're done in this room. We'll move to the next one. The only choice I have available to me is to rest. So we're going to go down one food and then roll our dice. See what results we get. All right, we've got two sixes and two twos. All right, so we know we're good on travel. We're really good on this one because we have an upcoming fight here. So it's good that we got those sixes. All right, so we're going to use a two to travel. So we're going to end up straight in this room, and we automatically have to fight an enemy with a plus three modifier. So the first thing we'll do is we'll roll our dice to see what we land on. Ouch. Okay, we rolled a six with a modifier of three. That gives us a nine, or basically uh, at the bottom enemy here. So this one has a base defense of six and a base attack of six. All right, so I know I want to apply a six dice to this fight. So now we're going to roll on the enemy here. Uh, see what his modifier is, a three. All right, and then we need to take into account his special ability, which is negative one life, the start of this, so we go down to a four. All right, so he's going to attack first. He hits for six plus the modifier, which is nine. I have a six uh, on my dice here, uh, seven, eight, so the difference of that is one hit, so he's done one damage to me. All right, so now that we've uh, now that we've taken the damage from the enemy, we'll actually need to see what damage I have done to the enemy. Uh, so we have our our six here. So that means with my base attack of three plus the six, I do nine damage. Uh, he has six shield plus uh, the three modifier nine. If the attack is equal to or greater than uh, their defense, then you actually win the fight. Uh, I might. I don't know if I've stated that earlier. If uh, on on any of the other fights, these other two that I did, that if the attack was equal to uh, that it was a push, uh, that was incorrect. If I said it, I'm not sure if I have, but I just wanted to go ahead and state that now. Uh, so since we were equal to or greater than uh, the enemy's uh, defense, we actually won the fight. Uh, so now we can go ahead and claim the uh, the reward here, which is going to be two experience. Uh, so that'll bring me to a three here on my experience chart. And now for the next one that goes over, uh, it resets back to zero. And then we get to pull from one of the uh, rewards here on the chart. Uh, one can be a food uh, or two health, or I can increase one of my stats, um, or maybe even both of my stats. I'm not 100% I'm not sure on that, but for where I am right now with low health, I'm going to go ahead and choose the, uh, the two health. Uh, that I get from that uh, experience or that level up, I guess. All right, so now that we've completed the action uh, for this enemy here, what we need to do is uh, go ahead and do the action for the space. So these two dice have been used. They only have a six and a two left. I can probably say I want to keep this six here uh, for this fight, so I'm not going to be using the six. Uh, that does leave the two available to me. Um, to use for this one, but it would just be giving it away for the quest, which eh, that might, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and use the two for, for the quest. And again, the, the number of the, uh, the value of the dice doesn't really matter because we're rolling on a random chart. So we'll go ahead and roll. Ah, we get a one, which is not good because that's going to be negative one health. So we're going to go ahead and down, go from uh, five to four on that. We've completed the, um, the action there, so we move to this space. Uh, the only action, I don't even want to do a hunt. Like I said, I want to save that six for something else uh, for this fight. So what I'm going to opt to do is I'm going to rest in this room here. So we're going to consume one food. 
And then we'll go ahead and roll these dice and see what I get. Um, not super great. I'm not doing super awesome on my rolls on this one. All right, so we've finished the resting there, so we can go ahead and move into this room. Uh, we know we have enemy to fight. So the first thing we're going to do is roll on the chart. This has a modifier of plus three. So we're going to get a seven with the dice roll. So this enemy is going to have a base defense of five and a base attack of three. The dice I want to apply to this fight would be my six. So now we're going to roll and see what modifier the enemy has. Ooh, not bad. All right, so remember we got the uh, seven here. So they're going to have a defense of five plus one. So six defense and an attack of three plus one, so four. Uh, so this one's going to be pretty easy for me uh, to take care of. So the first thing we do is we determine how many hits he does. Uh, so he does four. I'm easily able to block that with my six. Don't even have to worry about my base stats. Uh, now I get to attack him. I hit with a nine. He can only block six of it, so I easily defeat that one. Uh, so I get the reward, which is going to be one experience point. And so we're done with that action. So we can go ahead and proceed on doing this here, either the quest or do another rest. I might opt to, since I just did a rest and I still have uh, an okay dice pool there, I will opt to do the... Um, I'll do the quest here. So I'm going to use one of my dice that is a 2 and roll on the chart. Ah, we get a 6. 6 is better than a, lo a lost life from what a 1 would be, so that's going to get us an experience there. All right, our quest is done, so we need to move to the next tile. So that's going to cost us a 2, so I'm going to use this dice here. All right. Um... The only action we can take in here besides resting is we can go for the treasure. Uh, the treasure will be, uh, the only one I have here is a 5, so that'll be 5 plus 3, uh, that'll be an 8, so I can choose any that are down here. The 7 to 9 will give me a crystal. The 8 will allow me to re-roll a dice that's active. The 8 will also allow me to increase... Um, two shields or two uh, attack uh, which is I really I think I should go for that one I really do uh, I will go for the eight using this one and increase my attack stats by two so we'll go from the three to the five on my attack stats all right um, so we finished that all of our dice have been used so we're gonna move to this next room I will rest and go ahead and re-roll my dice. Getting a little better results. I like it. All right, the two I know I'm going to use in a little bit to cross over once I'm finished with this tile. Um, so we rested here, so we're going to move into this room. We have another enemy to fight with a plus four modifier. So we'll go ahead and roll our enemy dice or adventure die. We get a five plus four. That's going to give us nine. We're going to be attacking the, uh, the hardest enemy here. Uh, the dice I definitely want to use is my six. It's going to be the best I can do. So we're going to now roll the modifier for the enemy. I uh, still get to five. So uh, we take into effect the special ability of the enemy, which is negative one life. So I'm now down at a three. All right. So the attack for this one that we'll calculate first to me is an attack of six plus five. That's an eleven. The maybe I should have put my defense up more. <laughs> the uh, defense that I have is six, uh, seven, eight. So we'll edit out this little pause for calculation. Uh, let's see, they do six, 11. Uh, we can minus six, and so then he does five, so then he does three damage. All right, so this one's going to do uh, six damage plus five. I can defend uh, six. I can defend eight of it, so three damage come in. Uh, unfortunately for me, that's all the life I have left is three, so that's going to put me down at a zero, uh, which means unfortunately I have died. Uh, there's nothing I can do to heal up. Uh, once he gets me, he gets me. All right, so that's the end of the adventure for here. 
if I was able to continue on, uh, what I would have done is moved down to the next room and continued on like normal until we got to the actual boss here. Once you get to the boss, uh, the first thing you do is you set the health marker at 6 for the first space, uh, which indicates how much health the final creature has. He has his own attack stats, so you're not rolling on a chart here. He has an attack of 10 and defense of 8. So you would then pick the hero dice that you want to use for the fight. Roll that, determine if you were able to damage him. Whatever damage you do above uh, his shields is will will make the, the dice actually go down. Uh, so, so let's say you did uh, three points of damage to him on the first hit. The dice would go to three and then it would automatically move to the second space here. And then so on. If you weren't able to kill him by this one, It'll move down here. Once it's on this one, you have that's your final chance uh, to kill him. If you can't kill him after this third try here, then the monster is considered to have won the fight, and the adventurer uh, unfortunately has died. So that is a four quest scenario uh, or uh, adventure number one. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I can say hopefully. Uh, in the very near future, I'll try to get some some of the other adventures that are available for print out there, uh, get them to the table and try those out. Some of them come with some different rules. And um, yeah, that's it. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them on the, uh, the description of the, uh, the video you're watching. If you like the content and want to see more, uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, I try to bring, you know, games that I can play solo. Uh, on the on the channel and kind of run through those uh, with you and yeah just have a little fun so we'll see you guys next time